Hey everybody, John here, and welcome back to the series, How to Use Citrus. This is going to be video two, and in this video we're going to be discussing the main tab only. So first off, let's start on this first module here. So the first slider you're going to see is your volume knob, and this is going to be a global volume for everything in your entire patch. So that way it's a lot easier to adjust this volume by itself rather than having all these operators routed to different areas and filters and outputs and you don't want to just tweak one by one and all that craziness so you can just go here to the global volume and just drag that down to taste. Next slider over, this is your LFO slider. As you can see it says LFO, pretty basic. But what this one does is right now it's at the, at the very, very top. So it means that all your LFOs in your entire patch are going to be working as intended. The more you drag this down, the less influence those LFOs have. So if you have all these LFOs going and different operators and who knows where, if you hold Alt and click this knob, it'll snap it to the center, which will disable all of your LFOs. So think of this as like a global LFO influencer. And it does also go down, and that might be confusing, but what it does is essentially inverts the, uh, the polarity of those LFOs. So this is the same setting as this, just in the opposite direction. So let's put this back up here. And pitch here, hopefully it's kind of self-explanatory, but this is going to be the pitch for the entire patch. And you have a range of 24 semitones up and then 24 down, which is two octaves up and two octaves down. So let's hold Alt again and then click. I don't know what the Mac equivalent is, but yeah. So hold whatever button that is and click this knob here, probably Option, and uh, it'll snap back to the center. So these next two tabs or little modules here can be a little bit confusing because you might start making a patch. You have something to go on and you're like, okay, let me increase my attack. And you're like, that sounds the same. So the difference with the, this volume envelope and this filter envelope are that these are an offset to the envelopes and the filter envelopes that you already have in your patch. So these won't take any type of effect unless you have an ADSR envelope going somewhere. So this isn't the main, uh, this isn't the main envelope for your patch or for your operator itself. It's the offset to those other operators or those filters. So that's why when you probably move in these, they don't work. And ADSR attack decay sustain release. If you don't know this already, let me know. And if there's enough people, I'll, I'll probably end up making just a basic how to synth, what synthesis is, what different waveforms are, so you can understand these types of controls. So next up, we have our unison section or order here. And one right now basically means that this is going to be one voice. So we hit one note and there's going to be one note coming out. So the higher we increase this, let's say to four, if you can hear that difference, that's basically adding four additional voices to your patch or to, to that operator of, and all the operators essentially. So this is a global voice unison type of thing. If this topic is a little confusing, the best way I understood this was, let's say, you're singing, you're center stage, and you're singing the song, a cappella at that. Kind of embarrassing and nervous, I get it. You're probably sweating bullets up there. But you know what? You have a couple of your friends there. You have two friends. Let's do this. You have a couple of friends, or however many. This is your friend list. Think of that. That's how many people are, are going to be on stage with you, and they're going to be singing the same notes that you sing. So right here is going to be the panning. So this is going to be, all the way up is going to be all these additional voices spread across the stereo field. The more you bring this down, the more it's going to sound mono. So let's have, let's see, a seven. So there's, so there's a set, seven, essentially, there's essentially seven different voices happening right now. And the more you drag this down, the more it sounds like it's mono, like it's in front of you. But the more you bring this up, it'll stereoize it. This is going to be the volume of those extra singers or those extra voices. So if they're getting a little bit too loud, and they're kind of overstepping your fame right there, you may want to drag those bad boys down a little bit. And then next up, we have pitch. So let's say you're, these guys, your singers, are singing a little bit too close on pitch, so it doesn't really sound that different to you. And you want them to change their pitch a little bit so it sounds a little bit more full. So that's what this slider is here. So when you play something, let me drag this up. You can hear that they get a little bit more detuned. 
So think of this just as a regular D2 knob if you're familiar with uh, Serum or different synths. Uh, and then next up, we have this sub level here. So this will create a sub voice. So another voice essentially, that's one octave below the voices you already have. So if there's nothing here, let's play one note. Let's bring this uh, down just a little bit, it's a little too much. Bring that pitch down. So we have these, this uh, order of four here. And let's introduce this sub here. kind of hear there's that low end there and they take it out and it's gone so that's what this slider does here and this is going to be the unison of phase so this is this is going to determine the phase of these different uh, these different voices here so if you want to have them start on different cycles of their of their phase cycle that's what this slider is here is, is here for And then this last slider here is going to be the envelope, and this is going to set the amount of variation of the attack and the decay of the filter cutoff, resonance, and the volume envelopes of each unison voice. So that's what this last one here does. Next up, we have the modulation little section here with X and Y. So the, kind of simple. You only got two controls in addition to the smooth, which does exactly what you would imagine it to. It smooths out the uh, this modulation section. So... X and Y, what does that mean? So let's say you have different parameters and your different operators and you want to link all these different these different parameters and settings to one knob and just automate that. So that's where you would link that to this X or link that to this Y. And then these knobs here, if you right click them, you can create an automation clip. And here you can't automate these knobs here, but as you continue to watch, I'll show you how this is possible within Citrus. So that's, in a nutshell, what this modulation section is. And then let's move on to our EQ section. So this first slider here, off, is off. Pretty basic. Doesn't work. It's off. It doesn't exist. It's not there. And then we have out plus effects. So now the EQ is going to be turned on, and it's going to be EQing the output of your operators and the effects that you put on those operators. If you just select out, it's going to just EQ the output not the effects, and then at the very bottom, just the effects and not the direct output signal. So most of the times, I've kind of always had on out plus effects, but there are different cases where you want to go with these two. But for the most common stuff, it's going to be out plus effects. So over here, you have three different bands, parametric EQ. You have a low shelf, a peaking, and then a high shelf. You don't have to keep these exact same shapes. You can click this and scroll, and you have access to all of them, so you can make them all peaking if you would like to. And then these sliders are going to be the gain control, so the boost and then the cut. And then the frequency here, uh, you can also see it in the top left if, uh, if you didn't know that, which I hope you do by this point. And then bandwidth or the Q, you can set the width right here, and you can also see the value right up there. So basically your standard EQ, low shelf, peaking, high shelf, you got three of them, so go to town. And I find they're actually pretty good. Most of the times I do cutting, and then if I do boosting on these, it's very slight. Uh, these are kind of, I feel for me personally, you're kind of just taking out stuff that you don't want or just some muddy stuff in patches or you want to get a little tad bit of brightness there, just small little moves there. This shouldn't be, you shouldn't be relying on this EQ too much. And then over here on your quality section, so you have high quality envelopes. And before we get into the all these different settings, this quality section here is in two separate sections. If you see that, there's the draft and then there's the render. The render are, is going to be the settings applied once you export your song. So there might be times where you've noticed where you have a song going, it's sounding good, and then you export it and you have uh, citrus patches in there and then it sounds much better than you originally thought. So the reason for that is because when it renders, it's going to apply the high quality envelopes and it's also going to oversample it a little bit. You can do that in the draft as well while you're listening to it, but it will eat up more CPU and it may bog down your computer just a little bit. And according to ImageLine's own manual about the HQ or the high quality envelopes, that for the most part, the, the default setting here with them off is fine. Uh, so you don't, don't feel like you have to turn that on to have a good patch going on. And then next, oh, it's just oversampling. Let's talk about that for a little bit. So sometimes let's say your patch is just kind of sounding maybe cheap or, or not as good maybe. Try to crank this up just to listen to it and see if, if it's that. A lot of the times it is. 
and the higher you crank this, it's essentially going to be the better quality of this synth sound that you hear. That's why it's up at 8 for the render, which it should be default for eight for you as well. You can go higher all the way up to 64, but it kind of seems like that's going to be a little bit overkill. And yeah, so this next, uh, these knobs down here. So the first one is going to be random. Now, if you don't know the setting, it's actually a really, really, really cool one. So let's say you're trying to emulate an analog synth. And as we know, analog synths aren't exactly perfect as their digital counterparts. So there might be there might be a situation where on an analog synth, if you're hitting different notes, sometimes the notes might always might not always be in the right pitch. It might be off just a little bit, or maybe the volume isn't as exactly consistent as digital synths can be. So by turning this random knob on or this random button on, it's a global enableation of all, I don't even know if that's a word by the way, but basically you turn this on and it enables this property across all your operators. And for example, like you go in an operator and you go to the random tab, then you go to the volume and you can change this articulator here. So the volume will never be the exact same. It'll always pick a random value to make it sound a little bit more analog. So that's a really cool feature uh, is this random knob here. Mono key. So this setting, uh, according to image line is a big CPU saver. So if a note with a long release is pressed, and then that same note is pressed before that first release can finish, this mono key will cut the first one and then give priority to the second. So you're not doubling up on a lot of stuff that eventually will tax your CPU. So that's what this little button right here does. This global pitch, if you turn this on, this is going to enable the option to make the pitch articulation of operator one global so that all the other operators use it as a base and then they can set their offset from that with their own pitch settings. And then center, so with your final output of Citrus, this is where this blue section here comes in. So here's the oscilloscope going on. Let's take the spec down to one so we can just see the sine wave. So. For the most part, it looks pretty even. The sine wave is oscillating pretty evenly between this middle line. Now, what happens sometimes is maybe it might go a little bit up here and then a tad bit below the line, and it's offset just a little bit or maybe a lot. And if that happens, make sure to turn that on, and it'll center it back down here so it sounds uh, a little bit, a little bit better. Gibbs off. So this button. I never really actually use this one. It's It almost seems like it might be there for the exact purpose of something, but essentially this setting will attenuate the effect and synths where the low level oscillators can ring in sharp transition of output volume. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can, <clears throat> you can turn this setting on with different operators themselves, but generally I think you're fine if you leave this off. And next moving on to Porta, short for Portamento. This is where like your notes will slide, then what exactly snap to the exact note. So if you see here, these notes are gonna snap to the next pitch. And then you turn Porta on, and then wait, oh, it seems like it doesn't work, right? Well, this is a little bit of a twist uh, in this synth. And the reason is because you have to go to the actual operator into the pitch envelope, and then you turn this on we're going to go into this section in later videos, but for this demonstration, let's delete that envelope and then snap this point here in the middle. And let's create another one, maybe right here. An important thing is to right click this one and hit the, and set this one as the decay. So now we have portamento. Now you might be wondering, well, why, why do I have to go through all this? Why can't I just click porta and then it's on and it works? The difference in this synth is that when you click this on, which enables this property overall, the distance between this attack and this decay here is going to determine that different porto length. Let's drag this out here. And then shorten it again for demonstration. It's kind of short, you don't even hear it really. And then the longer you drag it here, let's do it kind of like stupid long. So that's essentially how that works. If you're wondering why Porta wasn't working, that's essentially going to be the reason because of that. And uh, let's see. So down here at the bottom, 
I try to do this as much as I can. Sometimes I forget, but it's always a good idea to name the patch down here in the patch name, the author, if you want to have credit to yourself or maybe whoever wrote the patch, and then the patch details. And here you can basically talk about what, what you have assigned to your X and what you have assigned to your Y and why you did it that way and, and maybe some different notes or this was made this way or it really depends on what you want to write there, but it's always a good idea to kind of write the details because after you write a lot of patches, sometimes you might not remember if you actually link something to the X and Y, you're just kind of scrolling through. And I've noticed that myself as well. So something to think about. And yeah, I think this basically covers this main tab. I hope that uh, it's starting to get a little bit less intimidating because this, this synth is very, very cool. One of my favorites personally, and in the next part, we're going to be diving into the operator tabs. And once you know one of these operator tabs, the rest are the exact same. So once you know one, then you're going to know the entire six of them as well. So thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next part. And yeah, till the next one.